prior to 1997, some professional colleagues and I uh, had been observing developments and evolution of Nigerian banking system, and we felt that uh, the industry will uh, get to a point where some banks would uh, fall off. And we decided to grow expertise and skills that will help us take advantage of that kind of uh, opportunity if it came up. And just like uh, <laughs> some of us say, it's more like uh, we saw it ahead of, uh, ahead of time. And it did happen. And when it happened, we saw the NDIC then in Nigeria. Uh, they wanted to liquidate over 22 banks. And some friends again and I felt that uh, it was time to practice uh, what we had foreseen and what we were preparing for. And that was how we came together and uh, made a bid for the then Crystal Bank, uh, which uh, we later changed to Sanda Trust Bank. And the bid was simple. A lot of depositors had lost a lot of money in, in banks at the time. And we thought that what we owed these depositors was to help them make sure they got their monies back, but over a period of time. So we, we approached the central bank, we approached uh, and they say, I will made an offer. We also approached the, in quote, SY shareholders of Standard Trust Bank, of Crystal Bank. Remember, the bank was totally gone, so there was nothing to say you, they had. But we still approached them and said, We would like to take over this bank. And the bank was under NDIC news, and that's what was going to <laughs> um, liquidate the banks. And so we made an approach. I said, okay, let's hear your plans. And I must commend the Central Bank and the NDS at the time, and also the then Finance Minister, Chief Anthony Ani. And then uh, we approved them. And that was how the journey started. It was not really a journey of us putting so much cash into the bank. It was more of uh, creativity, ingenuity, ideas, saying, you know, what some people call debt uh, equity swap. They say, you have depositors are owed by this bank. We want to assume the debt. And so let the deposit be that we are the ones owing them and not the bank. And so we converted what the depositors had in the bank at the time to equity and we paid the depositors off over a period of time. A few of them were interested and they decided to invest in the bank. The uh, majority were not interested, they just wanted out. And even at that, we also got some of them to say, okay, interest forbearance, because they were more interested in getting their principal back. And so that was how the journey started in 1997, and I got appointed the pioneer CEO of the of the of the new new in quote bank. And then um, the journey since 1997 has been one thing or the other, and I'm happy that um, many years down the line we look back and we we're happy that we're audacious and bold to make them move at the time. We're also happy that we had the regulators, policy makers who gave us the opportunity, who listened to us, to our ideas. But I recall our first application to the Central Bank of Nigeria at the time, uh, they said uh, the then <laughs> director of supervision, Mr. Gunle, is still alive. He's uh, one of my mentors today. And uh, he said, uh, this is a spurious and bogus <laughs> offer. <laughs> You know, Mr. Gunle was a no-nonsense man. He went on later to become the, the MD of NDIC for Banking Supervision Department. He, they turned it down, but we insisted. That's why today in UBA, perseverance, you know, resilience is a core virtue, a core attribute, a core value of ours. Because we, 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 we applied that early, early on in this, uh, in this journey. So that's how it all started. Going to university, I just thought I wanted to be a businessman <laughs> because my mom's brother, my mom and his brother were just two of them. So my uncle was a businessman, you know, in Nigeria and uh, was quite uh, successful at the time. And I was influenced. I thought he was very rich and also uh, I wanted to be a businessman, but not knowing whether, <laughs> just a businessman, you know what I mean? because he was described then as a businessman. And, uh, but in the university, that was why I read economics, you know, just to see. 
When in university, I got more enlightened <laughs> because I knew more how things operated. And the first degree, I was saying, I just wanted a good job. That would give me the start. But uh, when uh, I came to do my master's at Unilag, I know being in uh, Urban or Unilag, you know, a lot happening at the time. And that was the era of uh, new generation banks, a lot happening. Our friends, you know, <laughs> uh, in banking, our friends, some got jobs in some banks. And so that was all of us who were doing masters at the time, I did masters in economics. Uh, who were doing masters at the time, we just became interested and fascinated with interested in working in a bank. New generation bank, not old generation bank, not. <laughs> And so that was how it all started, and uh, we started applying for jobs in our banks. And I got, yes, at the um, master's level, it was clear I wanted to work in a bank. And um, yes, that was starting. As in then, you know, uh, Santana was a posh guy. <laughs> so we, 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 they oppressed us in school, I must say. <laughs> and then we too wanted to become the big boys <laughs> in future with the brochures, suspenders, white shirt, dark suits, etc. And uh, so whilst working at the bank uh, where I started, you know, I, I, I had a fairly, a very rapid um, career. Uh, progression growth. Uh, within 12 months, I was appointed after postgraduate school, I was appointed a branch manager. And you know, so that gave me the opportunity as a branch manager then, you were a mini CEO. And so I learned very quickly at the very early, I was 26, 27 then, I learned quite a lot. And then um, that was how we started looking at the banking sector of some friends and I, that this sector was growing at a very fast pace and we didn't think the manpower was there to support the growth of the sector and um, that there will be crisis in future. And so let's position ourselves to take advantage of the crisis and which is what uh, later happened. And then um, at the time as it happened, we immediately you know, saw this uh, Crystal Bank opportunity approach them and they agreed and we just said to ourselves, we must succeed. We must make a generational statement. We need to make this work. We started about 100 of us, and the current uh, GMB of EBA, Kenneth Duzoka, was also part of the team that started the STB. You know, it was there from day one. We went to Gary, we retreated, we strategized, we came up with what we call the three tier strategic intent. Tier one, to turn around the distressed bank and make it viable. Tier two, to make this district bank become one of the top 10 banks in Nigeria in a market that had over 120 banks. And tier three, in, to become one of the top 10 banks in Nigeria. And we put time frames for this. First one time frame was three years, zero to three. Second one was about to seven years. And the third one was seven to 10 years. That 10 years, year 10, we want to be one of the top three banks in Nigeria. And so this was it. This was what drove us, every one of us, Pioneers have one new day, and all the staff who came on board subsequently, they knew this. And that was how it all started. So we turned around this bank. We, that gave us like put a spring on our souls and we were like ready to bounce more because we saw the first intent to have been accomplished. The second intent to become the top five, 10 banks, we became one of the top five banks. Standard Trust Bank then it was more. The top three banks, UBA, First Bank, Union Bank, Zenith guaranteed that, in fact, Sender Trust was fifth before even others. And then we said, okay, so this is achievable. Then let's re strategize for the third year goal, which was to become one of the top three banks. And that was how, from Ashes of Crystal Bank to Standard Trust Bank, from Standard Trust Bank to United Bank for Africa. We, year 10, before year 10, this is our third year strategic intent, which was to become one of the top three banks in the country. We, 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 we achieved that. We achieved that through the combination of Standard Trust Bank and United Bank for Africa. Combination, equity combination, human capital combination, so everything together. And then we created uh, today's UBA. It was quite an interesting and exciting moment for all of us who felt completely accomplished because recall, when we started, it was a mission to show that this generation of Nigerians and of Africans can make a difference. And that was how it all started. And when we got to United Bank for Africa, 
proposed, uh, the measure was tough. Integrating the big old 70-year-old bank with the young Standard Trust Bank, bringing them together and making sure that we retain the agility of Standard Trust Bank in a big institution like UBA. It was not easy, but we thank God for everyone who was on board and were able to make it happen. And having accomplished our third year strategic intent, the next thing was what next? And we said we wanted to become the Pan-African Bank. And so from, again, Ashes of Crystal Bank, Standard Trust Bank, United Bank for Africa, where we had become the largest financial services group in Nigeria at the time, so through the major that we orchestrated, which again was the largest financial services combination of major in Sub-Saharan Africa at the time and to date in terms of size. And so at, uh, at, uh, in 2005, when this happened, we re-strategized again. At the time, we worked with McKenzie. First time we worked on our own, now we worked with McKenzie. I said, how do we become the leading financial services group in Africa? And so we came up again with our three-tier strategic intent for the new UBA. Tier one being solidifying our leadership in Nigeria. Tier two, becoming a Pan-African bank. And tier three, having global presence in key financial centers of the world. Again, we put time frame to it. In 2007, we branched out, we branched out Ghana, Cameroon, I think, uh, and other countries. Today, I'm happy to say that UBA operates in 20 countries in Africa, Nigeria plus 19 others from, non, from zero uh, at major of 2005. So that intent of growing Pan-African Bank will have one on, on course. Um, are we the leading Pan-African Bank yet? Not immediately, but we are one of the top three in Africa at this time. And then in, uh, in uh, the global arena, UBA is by far number one African bank, all of Africa. African bank, we have, we are the only African bank that operates in the United States of America with a deposit taking license, all of US. Uh, we have UBA UK, we have UBA in Paris, a rep office, and just recently we got our proven principal to operate in uh, Dubai. So you can see that from New York, London, Paris, and Dubai now, we are dotting the lines, crossing them, and making sure that we are able to improve our capacity and capability to serve African businesses across the globe and to serve Africans in diaspora and to also serve those who want to do business in Africa, to also bring capital into Africa. So looking back, the journey that started 1997 um, has come to a position where all of us who were part of it and those who joined later and those who are sitting there today, are there today, uh, feel accomplished, um, but the journey is still beginning because it's a journey in eternity. The merger of Standard Trust Bank and United Bank of Africa uh, was quite a significant one in so many ways. You know, first is uh, consummating the deal. Consummating the deal was not easy. We had a retreat at uh, Standard Trust Bank because we felt we had accomplished our first two strategic intents and the third one we needed to embark on to keep um, in line with uh, our 10-year plan. And so we had uh, this retreat in uh, somewhere Lekki, Hotel Bellissimo, and then we had different, different uh, teams. One team was Team UBA and that was Team First bank, and that was Team Union Bank. And fourth was Team ETI Eco Bank and uh, ETI and uh, Eco International Bank, ECOWAS International Bank, and then uh, Standard Trust Bank. So these four groups, we had breakout sessions, they all left, and spent one day each discussing for UB and UB and the Standard Trust of Merge. How do we go about it? Union Bank and Standard Trust to go back, the First Bank and Standard Trust to go back, then ETI and uh, Standard Trust to go back. So 
And why do you choose those banks, those three banks? You, you'd be a first bank, union bank, we're top three banks in the country. So we knew that for us to become one of the top three banks in Nigeria, we either do it by way of uh, acquisition or by way of combination. The growing to become on a, organically to become the top three, one of the top three was not in our viewpoint conceivable at the time. But we thought that by merger or by acquisition, we'll get there. And then for you to acquire, there must be willing buyer, <laughs> a willing seller. And also, we didn't know if this would come. So we decided, you know, which is what I say to people, to, it's always good to be clear about your purpose, your destination, you know, your mission, what you want to achieve. It's even better if you put time frame to it. But it's fantastic when you're able to execute it. So we had that dream, that session. And so the Union Bank team presented, the first one, and we narrowed down. We tried to be pragmatic also as much as we were. We we're quite ambitious, but also very pragmatic. So we said, no, that the chances of a combination with First Bank would be very unlikely because of the ownership structure of First Bank. We said UBA we could explore. Union Bank we thought was most feasible in the circumstance. And then for ETI, we said, you know, APSA was becoming excited about the rest of Africa, about West Africa. And APSA had approached us to see if ETI, APSA, Standard Trust Bank could merge. And they offered that they would like me to be the CEO. And they arranged for me to meet with the uh, group CEO of uh, Barclays at the time, because Barclays owned, uh, had acquired a significant interest in APSA. So we put that also on the table. But you know, for all, it was important that we were able to orchestrate and execute our strategic plan. We didn't think that European Bank would understand the African opportunities. And, and we're right who made that decision because they put all kind of offer on the table. They said you should be very happy to, to, to be part of a Barclays Bank. I said, but we felt also audacious as we were at the time that was also from growing the Barclays Bank out of Africa. And so, but we, nonetheless, that was one of our fourth or our four options. And so we, we looked at these four options and thought that the most viable of the four were UBA and Union Bank. And the next thing was execution. How do we go about it? And so I, from that meeting, I sent a message to the then GMD of Union Bank, Gordon Arbor, that I'd like to have lunch with him. And in the course of the week, we agreed a date for lunch at the Koyu, uh, Koyu Club, etc. And I sent a message as we were leaving the session. This is a session that started like on Thursday ended on Sunday, and so I leave I sent him to the then Kim Belosaga of Kim Belosaga, the, the one of the significant owners, holders, uh, shareholders of UBM. And I said, Kim, this Tony Melo, I would like an opportunity to see you. He responded, and I said, let's talk. I called him, he said he was traveling to South Africa that night, and if I could see him, um, uh, if we could see when he returned, I said, if you don't mind, let me just pop in again, perseverance. If you want something, hang it. But I said, if I could pop in to see you briefly before your trip, and then when you come back from South Africa, we can have an elaborate meeting. He was gracious enough to agree. He granted me the other, and I drove straight to his house. The same day we ended the retreat. And I said to him, Kim, you know, the average of the top three South African banks is bigger than our top three banks put together that we need to grow capacity from Nigeria to compete. And, and that I believe, I put the future on the table, I said I believe that combination between UB and Standard Trust Bank can take us there. That we know how to run the financial institution, but we need the capacity of a UB. He said to me, this makes sense, this makes sense. So let's talk, let's keep talking. <laughs> okay, let's keep talking. And so it took us two years. I mean, there was a day I went to a South, I think, Nicebridge, and we walked from there to Harrow. Just two of us, just walking, just talking. I didn't know what trying to sign me out to know, etc. So just walking, talking. And then, uh, of course, when you're doing things like you keep it close to your chest. 
It was just one guy that, and I did not want to distract the bank. So the execution, I was just handling it directly, the execution of all of this. And so suffice to say that December 17, 2004, we closed the deal. First was um, acquisition of significant interest in UBA by Standard Trust Bank, and two was merger. So there was acquisition, there was a merger, and that's how the journey started. Now, you would think that just acquiring or merging was like the end. No, that is just the beginning. Because when you acquire, when you merge, merge, the critical piece is the integration of the merger. And so integrating Standard Trust Bank and United Bank of Africa was tough. First was the name issue. What name should you adopt? Should it be Standard Trust Bank, should it be UVA, or should it be UBA, SCVA, all kinds. You know, we had, that's to us, the first test. And we had sessions, etc. You know, the way I behave, you know, putting different groups together, group, STV group, UBA, group, uh, combination of the two names. And the emotions were so high, you know, for Standard Trust Bank guys, it was like an accomplishment, you know, conquest. <laughs> you know, so it should be Standard Trust. <laughs> guys who first should be UBA, it should be UBA. All with clear and justifiable reasons, you know. But um, it was clear that if we wanted pride to come first, we would use said Standard Trust Bank. But that would have defeated the purpose of the combination. Because we wanted capacity, we wanted the platform, the history of UBA is huge, rich, well respected. Standard Trust Bank, great but new bank, okay? And banking is a conservative institution, a profession. So that was how we decided. I told guys, I said, guys, let's go with UBA. It didn't go down well with my team, but you know, finally we all agreed that it should be UBA. And so that was the first test. Second was technology. What technology should we use? UBA then was using um, Flexcube, I think, and Sander Trustman was using, was using Fineco. So some banks use Flexcube, some banks use Fineco. They both have advantages and disadvantages. So the question of, I got back to another, but who was past CEO of UBA Group. And I said, I'm not, I need advice from you. Because I do it, you know, I, for me, you can always seek advice from anywhere. And now, if you make the right decision, nobody will remember who gave you advice, but it's you that applied it, that takes the credit. And that's why I say to my colleagues today, be humble, seek for advice, but be ready to make a decision. And don't keep seeking about that forever. And so we sought advice, then it was not enough. Uh, we had to fly in Mackenzie's global consultant on IT. He came to Nigeria in the morning, flew out that night, because you can't afford to keep him in Nigeria for more, two, three days. And we had a session. I put the UBA, then UBA IT head, to be in charge of the Standard Trust Bank Group, the, to be in charge of the team that would advocate for us to use Fineco, which was Standard Trust Bank <laughs> package. I put the then head of IT in Standard Trust Bank to be the head of the team advocating for us to use UBA Flexcube and we had fun. And then we had the McKenzie consultant, a certain doctor and co, and the other McKenzie partners. And so this team gave all reasons why we should use Fineco, the other reasons why we should use Flesky. And it was quite clear, and we adopted Fineco. That was the, the third one was getting old generation banks, so to speak, and new generation bank culture, culture, integrating culture. And I must tell you, it took, in fact, it's only recently that I can say that we have been able to merge the cultures. Culture is the toughest part of it all. You don't get it right so easily because it's about human beings. It's about retraining people's habits, ways of doing things. In fact, corporate idiosyncrasies and mannerisms, changing those things, it's almost impossible. But to us, it was a task that we must accomplish and characteristic with who we are. You know, we tried and we succeeded. And keep in mind that we did not just merge and remain static. We merged, we were integrating, and we were expanding. Our UBA Africa expansion started in 2007, 2006, late 2006. 
So as you're integrating the big <laughs> institutions, you're also rolling out new ones. And we're acquiring. We acquired by the biggest bank in Burkina Faso. We acquired the third biggest bank in Benin Republic. And we're moving in that fashion. It was not easy. And that, you see my gray hair? <laughs> that wasn't my gray hair, certain. My elder brother who is seven years older than me doesn't have gray hair. Why well, have, <laughs> have gray hair? That is part of uh, what we got from the combination of STB, UB. So in a nutshell, I would say, looking back, looking back, the journey that started in 1997, um, I'm happy we embarked on that journey. It has a toll on us. Uh, for me, as a family man though, I try to make sure I balance things. I try to make sure my family side did not survive. In that process, I was also growing the family, <laughs> growing, having my kids and co. So, um, but everything came together, you know, the work, the family, uh, and, and it all. And um, I, I recall then, like Kennedy, the CEO, who was there at, from the onset to date, and that's why we're all looking, we knew it was a matter of time for him to become the CEO of UPA because he's seen it all from the start. And, um, and that's also why we believe that um, he has all it takes to take UPA to the next uh, destination because uh, he's been part of uh, everything we have done. Quite a number of people, you know, still in the system today. I look at them, I'm so excited that they're still in the system. You look at the uh, Kaede Shola in uh, it, he was there. He, 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 <laughs> he def defected, as I say it briefly, he came back. Oliver Laoba, Muyuwa Kiemi. These are great uh, pioneers, and so many of our ladies who are bankers today in the bank. You see, people have done 20 years, 25 years in the system from Standard Trust Bank, from the ODBA, people like Mikey Loba and Co. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's exciting seeing all these people around, seeing that we're still in together, you know, and we look forward, I look forward to even second generation of these STB people, second generation of the STB UBA people, third generation of co running UBA, because that's what is exciting. Mike, um, Mike Osuji, who works with me, uh, Harold, you know, all these guys who've all been trenches together, we all started together, and I'm happy that they are still very much around. My drivers, my security guys, personal security guys, my, my, I mean, I like, I'm very passionate about everyone who has been part of our journey from start to date, you know, because as I say, but for them, we won't be who we are. <laughs> they make the difference, you know. Easiest thing to do is to, to lead. Um, more difficult thing is to do. And these guys, all of our guys at uh, UBA, I love my heart for them for what they do. Looking back and looking forward, first looking back, I like that uh, out of ashes, so to speak, you know, we've created today's uh, financial services group that's called United Bank for Africa. We've taken it to the next level. Today, we're operating 20 countries in Africa. That dream of creating a Pan-African bank, that dream of helping to, to, to intermediate and that dream of helping to, to support the industrialization of Africa through the financial services play, that dream of helping to orchestrate and improve payments across Africa, that dream of helping to support our small and middle scale enterprises, and most importantly, that dream of integrating Africa through our people. I mean, you have someone from Burkina Faso who is part of UBA group, someone from Kenya, all imbibing the same culture of excellence, same culture of enterprise, same culture of execution. That's what we need in Africa. So I look back and I say, we've done well in this area. But for me, it's good to celebrate the past, but more importantly, the future. Because today's UBA, we didn't start it. People handed it over to us. We must hand over a stronger UBA to others. So I look forward you know, to the future where UBA one will help further than we ever have ever done to, to support Africa in the area of industrialization 
support uh, Africa in the area of infrastructure, massive, massive deployment of infrastructure on the continent, helping to further simplify payments, helping to create jobs directly through the employment UBA provides others, but more importantly, indirectly, through the support for small and medium scale enterprises who can help, who will help to create the jobs that we're, we're in their need of in Africa to power people out of poverty. So I look forward to UBA that not just a financial services group, but UBA that means and makes meaning and has relevance to the ordinary African, average African, a UBA that they will say, but for UBA, I would have been able to put a shelter, a shelter over my head. But for UBA, this my business idea would have gone to grave with me. But for UBA, my children would not have been able to go to school. That is the UBA we want to have. The UBA that is relevant and strategic, significant and real to the ordinary man. That's what we want to see. And I think with the crop of people we have in UBA, the board members, extremely committed people, selfless people, our staff, all level. We quarrel, we have our own disagreements in house, as is expected. But we are glued by that bigger mission, that bigger aspiration to be meaningful to the ordinary African. Unless and until we accomplish that, we will not go to sleep. <laughs>